You're listening to the CIP podcast, The Study Abroad Cast, Season 4, Episode 2. I'm your host, Jacqueline. In this show, we explore the world of study abroad, offering advice, insights, and travel stories, bridging perspectives and cultures along the way. On this episode, we'll be speaking with an Indigenous student who participated in the Sweden Field School. Let's get right into it. Today on our episode, we're pleased to welcome Samantha. To get started, Samantha, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and your study abroad experience? Hello, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, So as you mentioned, my name is Samantha or Sam. I tend to go by either. I'm in my final year of my undergrad with a major in anthropology and a minor in biology. I love my time here at Guelph and it feels wild that I'm already in my fourth year. And this past May, I had the incredible experience of participating in a field school as part of the Guelph Experiential Learning. And it was called Conversations with the Sami on Indigenous Land and Cultural Revitalization. And it was the most incredible experience and I can't wait to talk more about it. I'm glad to hear you had such a fantastic time on the field school. And maybe for those listeners who don't know what a field school is, could you briefly explain what a typical day was like on the Sweden field school? Yeah, so just a little bit of context about field schools. They tend to mix sort of in-class or on-campus uh, more traditional learning, as well uh, with hands-on in-person experience, normally on an international context. So yeah, for this uh, field school, we were in Sweden or Sápmi territory, the traditional territory of the Sámi people. And it's really hard to sort of describe a a typical day on the field school, because we would say that every day like we learned enough to fill an entire course with just what we learned in that one day. And it also had a whole bunch of variety in terms of what we did. It tend to, if I could kind of summarize it into two main parts, we had one that was more of a an urban portion where we were in uh, Stockholm and some larger cities. We did museum trips. We did some talks at university, uh, some talks with Sami organizations so that we had more an urban portion of the trip. And then we also did a lot of land-based work uh, further north in Sweden. And that had us, yeah, out on the land, learning teachings from Sami people, getting to sort of see what their everyday life was like um, and what they experienced. So there certainly wasn't a typical day (laughs) by any means, but we did so many incredible things. A lot of the trip, as the, the title says, it's about conversations. So there was a lot of sitting and talking and sharing food, which is a huge thing in Indigenous culture of just, yeah, to sit down and share a meal with each other. That really was the center focus of the entire trip. But along with that, like I said, we did so many other amazing things like going to museums and getting sort of decolonial tours from the Sami people of these cities and institutions. And yeah, getting to talk with youth was really one of the most amazing portions as well. Um, So yeah, we did, we did so many amazing things that it's, yeah, so hard to summarize in just one typical day. It's definitely neat to hear the variety of different things that you were able to experience that contributed to kind of this overall field school experience. So as an Indigenous person in Canada, what was it like for you to connect with the Indigenous community in Sweden? It was it was truly eye opening. And one of the most amazing things about it, I think, was the instant connection that we had. It was amazing to just start a conversation, know that we we understood each other, even if we were living across the world, which was was so wild to experience. And I think it it opened eyes on both of our sides. I think we definitely learned so much from them, but it was also amazing to share our experiences from Canada and what we go through here and to yeah, see the overlaps and see the ways that we both have a lot of similar struggles and how we try and deal with that and, and work through things and make positive change, especially with the youth getting to have those conversations on on yeah, what what they experience and what they what they wanted to know from us. I think we went there expecting to just learn so much from them but it was it was amazing to see that they also really wanted to learn from us and that it was this reciprocal relationship that we were sharing and giving and and learning and yeah it it is almost it's hard to describe in words of that of that connection to yeah to see that even though we're we're separated by all this space that there is still such a deep understanding and to also just view yeah indigenous people on this international context that we all have these struggles that we have to work, we have to work together in to to learn how to deal with and to create a better world in general, no matter where we are. 
I love that the conversations went both ways and that you were each able to kind of take something from this experience and build those connections with each other. So I also believe that your field school coordinator and some of the other U of G students that you were traveling with were Indigenous as well. And so did the field school help you connect to the Indigenous community here in Canada as well? Yeah, I would say it definitely did. I was fairly connected with uh, the Indigenous community on campus, and I was thankful that I had a couple friends that I had known previously that also went on this trip that I had met at the Indigenous Student Centre and as part of the Indigenous Student Society. So it was great to have those connections, but it 100% grew those and also created new ones when we were out there with um, the professor who's an Indigenous professor here, Kim Anderson. It was incredible to to get to know her and, and see what she does as an Indigenous prof on campus and all the incredible work that she does just outside of that as well. And even leading this field school. Uh, it was also great. We had an elder on the trip, an Indigenous knowledge holder, and getting to know her as well as her daughter for part of it, helping to yeah, learn more even about myself as an Indigenous person here in Canada and, and to learn that way, not just with, you know, all of the other amazing things we were learning about the Sami people, but to also learn about each other. And one of the yeah most incredible things about this trip as well is that it it mixes Indigenous and non-Indigenous students from the university. So although there were some of us, um, many that I knew Indigenous students, there were also non-Indigenous students. And I think we also learned a lot from each other, even though we're from the, the same university, from the same place. There was there was so much knowledge that we were able to share um, amongst each other. And I think that also helps, you know, the greater conversation of reconciliation in Canada as well, of, of just, yeah, being able to sit down and have these conversations with non-Indigenous and Indigenous students and and see even the things we have in common and the things that we want to learn from each other as well as what we've learned on this on this broader scale. That sounds really great and I think you touched on it how these field schools are really a unique opportunity to connect with other Guelph students and also kind of develop relationships with a professor here on campus like you're actually traveling with them and experiencing all of this with them and so it's a pretty cool opportunity, I think, for students. So the CIP office received funding through the Global Skills Opportunity, which is funded by the Government of Canada's Outbound Student Mobility Pilot Program. And this funding opportunity is designed specifically to support students and increase the participation of students who are traditionally underrepresented in study abroad opportunities, which includes Indigenous students, First Nations, Inuit, or Métis, students registered with Student Accessibility Services, and or students who have demonstrated financial need. And so through this funding, CIP was able to create the Sweden Field School and provide travel grants to participating eligible students. So did having a field school with a theme of Indigenous culture in another country help to pique your interest in a study abroad program? Yes, I would say it definitely did. I, to be honest, didn't know much about the field school programs before this. It was through a friend who had went on the field school uh, the year prior that she was just telling us all how amazing it was. And it yeah, really piqued my interest. This was yeah, not only an amazing international learning experience, but it also focused on Indigenous culture and in a way that I had never really thought about before. Um, so that, yeah, 100% caught my interest. And then as soon as I met Kim and some of the other students uh, that had participated previously, I knew it wasn't something I could pass up. I think it is such a great opportunity for Indigenous students to to see themselves reflected in this kind of, yeah, hands-on um, experiential learning. In, in a way that they might not in, in other senses or even in the institution itself. Um, so I think that, yeah, definitely for a lot of students, it's amazing to, to have that opportunity to explore themselves and what they're passionate about, as well as sort of connect it to this, yeah, this broader context and the global world that we all live within. Oh, that sounds great. So we are happy to say that we have some more of these GSO inclusive field school travel grants that we'll be able to give out for the summer 24 programs, which includes the Sweden field school, which will be running again. So that's very exciting. Uh, so do you have any advice that you would give other Indigenous students who are considering participating in this program? Yeah, I think my number one piece of advice would be if you're even just thinking about it to take the leap 
to to do it because it really is at least for myself one of the most amazing things I've ever done. I've learned so much and I'm still continuing to learn the relationships that I've built. I'm I'm still, you know, working working with and and yeah, learning new things about myself, but also meeting new people and building these connections and even academically it's helped me to grow so much. Um, and see kind of what learning is like outside of the classroom and how much you can really learn in that sense when you when you're looking up from a book. <laughs> so yeah, I, I think I would say just just do it. The funding is amazing and definitely helps out a lot of students and it's it's there to to help the indigenous students on campus that you know might might be worrying about all the other things that come with doing a field school. but I would say there's supports. Lots of people want to help you and make sure that you're able, if you want to do this, that it's something you can do. Uh, so I would say take that leap of faith. I know I I laughed with some friends after we went on the field school that like we couldn't believe we even thought for a second about not coming on the trip, like <laughs> about not even applying. That we were like, oh, it's you know it's never gonna happen, and they won't pick us. And yeah, it's we can't even believe now that we even had those thoughts of of those what ifs that now looking back, I don't think any of us would change a single thing that happened. We're one hundred percent happy that we were able to to have this experience. And I, I definitely want so many other Indigenous students to have these same experiences and be able to learn in the way we did. Well, I'm glad to hear that now that you've returned, it just seems like a no brainer that you should just participate in these programs. And you didn't mention all of the supports available. And I know like from CIP's side of things, it's like we really want students to participate in these programs. And so if you are having questions about what it's like or how to make it happen for you like please reach out to us like we're more than happy to sit and chat with you and see how we can make this work for you so Amanda, i have one final question for you um, do you have any final advice or insights that you would like to share yeah i think one of the major things that i've i've learned through this experience is is trying not to second guess myself and put myself kind of within a box of of what i think is achievable I think, yeah, especially with Indigenous students at a post-secondary institution, we can tend to feel like we don't belong in certain places or should be taking up certain space. But through this experience, I've learned that we we have the opportunity to share so much knowledge. We hold so much knowledge and we know so much, but also we have the opportunity to to start these conversations that will lead to bigger and better things and make change. And I definitely want to see other Indigenous students and even non-Indigenous students on campus being able to take these opportunities to to learn and and grow and learn new things about them. Yeah, on this sort of amazing international context that we have the opportunity as post-secondary students to engage in. It's it's not something that in your in your everyday work life per se, you will have the opportunity to to travel abroad and and do these things and have these conversations. So I would definitely, yeah, say say take the opportunity, just yeah, seize the day and and grab these opportunities when they when they come up because they won't always they won't always be available to us as students. So yeah, definitely don't limit yourself. Let you know all those that are are wanting to help you and see you succeed. Let them help. Let them support you, and and it will only just keep getting better. Thank you so much for sharing so much about your experience, your own personal development, the connections you made and the conversations that you started. And even though the field school itself is over, it sounds like a lot of the learning and growing and uh, connections are still happening. So I'm glad to hear that. So that's all for today's episode of the Study Abroad Cast. Don't forget to explore your own study abroad opportunities on the CIP website, uogwelf.ca slash CIP, or follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is CIP underscore Guelph. Thanks for listening, and thanks to Samantha for sharing her advice, insights, and travel stories. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we look to unpack the study abroad experience even further.